Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Valerie McKeon. I am so excited to paint for you today white puffy clouds in a blue sky. Clouds and skies are just one of my absolute favorite things to paint and I think there's really something universally beautiful and peaceful about just a blue sky day with white puffy clouds. I think about being a kid laying in the grass, watching the clouds go by, picking up shapes in the clouds, and it's just brings such a good feeling. I wanted to bring that feeling to this painting. I have a simple approach that I use when I tackle white clouds. It's not just about grabbing for a white pastel. I want clouds that have a sparkle to it and nuance. I'm going to show you what I do, so let's get started. Before we get started at the easel, I wanted to talk about the palette that I chose because this is really the key to my simple approach for painting white clouds. I have my blues over here. These are going to be the sky colors, an aqua, and my pinks here, which are harder pastels that I will be underpainting with. I love to underpaint with pink when I have a blue sky. We know that red and blue, they make purple. And so when I have some pink underneath of the blue sky, it just has such a beautiful sparkle to it. And then these colors are my land color. That's a really nice complement to the purpley colors that are going to be in the sky. Yellow is the complement to purple, so it's just going to give a really interesting color palette to have this in the ground. But here are my white cloud colors, and this is really the key to my simple approach, and it's a two, two, two approach. I have two shadow colors for the clouds. One is a little bit cooler of a, a purple. They're both sort of a purple gray. This one's a little bit cooler. And then this one is a warmer purpley gray color. Then next, I, I want to gradually build to the white. So next, duo here. They are light colors, but they are nowhere near white yet, but they are a light value. And again, I have a cooler light value. This is a purpley kind of a gray. And then I have a peachy color. This is a Sennelier. This is a harder um, Rembrandt pastel. So I have cool and warm and again coolness and warmth it's all relative so this could be considered a warm gray if it was next to a cooler gray but next to a peachy color this becomes the cool color and this is a warm color and then next i have my really this is the bulk of the whites in the clouds this is a yellow, it's kind of hard to see. So this is actually a creamy yellow color. And then this is a Diane Townsend pastel. It has some pumice in it, which I really, really love for clouds and final layers. And it's actually not a pure white. It's called burnt sienna. It has a little bit of warmth in it as well. So these are going to be my lightest values in the clouds. And then the bonus of a pure white, which is used in such small doses. We might think of white clouds and wanna reach right for that white pastel, but we actually want to build up these colors and values and then save our lightest value white for those finishing marks. So this is my two, two, two approach. A cooler and a warmer shadow, a cooler and a warmer mid to light value for the clouds, and then two 
warm, really light values for the clouds, and, and then our pure white. All right, let's head to the easel. I am using UART sanded paper in 400 grit in a size six by nine today. And I'm taping it to my backer board, which is just a piece of foam core with some white masking tape. This will give an edge on the painting, but UART tends to curl a little bit. So I, I tend to like to affix UART paper this way to my backer board, just to make sure that it's really nice and, and flat for the painting. To get started, I'm using a dark brown, harder pastel just to get in a very small tree line. The This scene, I don't have a reference photo for it actually. This is just completely made up because I want to show how you can take this method and this approach for painting white clouds and apply it to all different types of compositions and even just make up the sky and make up the cloud formations. That's one of the great things about clouds. There's all types of formations. You can really use your imagination and and just come up with with a composition. I am underpainting, as I mentioned, with that darker pink and now a lighter pink closer to the horizon. As a rule of thumb, skies will get lighter in value as they're closer to the horizon and then darker as we go up to the heavens. And this is one of the tricks that we have up our sleeve as landscape painters to be able to give dimension and depth in a painting. I'm also bringing this dark pink color down into the foreground. This is going to play so beautifully with the yellow in the foreground and really just, I love having this pink underneath. It's going to sparkle through these colors and just give a really neat effect. And now I'm adding the distant tree line, just a very thin line in a purple. And now I'm coming in with my first sh cloud shadow color, which is the cooler of the two. This is a Terry Ludwig pastel. Something to keep in mind, and I'm going to keep saying this throughout, the key to get really layered luminous clouds is a light, light touch. You don't wanna fill up the tooth of the paper too quickly. Now I'm using a piece of pipe foam insulation because I'm going to rub in that pigment into the sky. And this is just pipe foam insulation from the hardware store. I bought one piece and I, I seriously think it's going to last me forever. You just need a tiny piece of it. I'm just rubbing that into the tooth of the sanded paper. And for the foreground, I'm using another underpainting technique, which I love, which is rubbing alcohol. That was 70% isopropyl alcohol and a fan brush. And I will be liquefying the pastel onto the surface. Pastel is just pure pigment. And so when you add liquid to it, it liquefies into paint. And this is a great way to start a painting for the underpainting because as it liquefies, it thins it out and pushes it into the tooth of the sanded paper. So it will give you a lot more layering ability once this pastel is, is liquefied into the surface. The reason I used pipe foam insulation in the sky is because I wanted a smooth application, but often in the foreground, we have trees and grasses, and so I like a little bit more texture in the foreground area. So that's why I'm using the fan brush and just really liberally putting on the rubbing alcohol. I'm not worried 
about it here. This is actually a really fun part of the process. You'll get some drips. I embrace all of that in the underpainting. As Bob Ross would say, sometimes you get some happy little accidents in your underpainting as it drips and sometimes it uh, the pigment even blooms a little bit. It's really fun. Now I'm going back into the cloud shadow portions with my warmer gray, purpley gray color. And so the reason for my approach here with a cooler gray and a warmer gray is because if you think about the clouds, they have shadow sides and then they have light sides. And often those light sides, especially if we're talking about a blue sky day, that's going to be hit by the sun. That's going to be warmer. But the shadows are going to tend to be cooler in color. So as we go from shadow to lighter portion of the cloud, it's nice to have these temperatures that will bridge that, that will bridge going from the cooler shadows to the warmer, lighter parts of the clouds. So here I am using my lighter value. This is going to be the, the bulk of the clouds in this value range. And this is the cooler gray. I'm just really lightly scumbling in the shape of those clouds. And it's okay to cross that, that shadow portion. We want it to merge together. The clouds are really, they're water vapor. They're, they're vaporous and transparent in, in some areas. So just keeping a really light touch. And now I'm going in with the peachy color for the warmth. The, the play of the cool and the warm and why I love this approach also is because it just gives so much interest to the clouds and something a little bit unexpected. It reads white, but we can have pinks in there and yellows and peaches. And these are all fun things to experiment with in, in white clouds. And I just love that play of the cooler gray with the warmer peach. Now I'm going back in with my warmer shadow color, just very, very lightly. I'm using my finger here to soften the texture a bit. This is all a dance when you're painting the clouds in soft pastel, going back and forth, softening some texture and some edges, going back over portions, and then if you cover too much of the shadow, you can go back in with the shadow color. When you use a light touch, and that's why it's so important, it does allow you to have that push and pull and back and forth. Now to add in the sky, we have the cloud shape pretty much well established. So I'm now going to carve it in a little bit more by painting the sky that's behind it. I'm using a really beautiful, vibrant blue from the Terry Ludwig Best of the Blues set. I recommend this set. It is beautiful, especially if you love painting skies. And a side note, I actually have a beginner's guide to soft pastel ebook, and I lay out all of my favorite sets, all of my favorite pastels, papers, supplies, studio setup, everything in that ebook. So I'll be sure to add a link in, in the notes. Again, a very light touch to just start building in this sky. You can still see a lot of the pink showing through at this point. Now I'm going in with a slightly lighter value blue, also from that Best of the Blues set. And I want to start merging this, this gradient. So from the darkest blue at the top, I want to gradually work my way down into a lighter value, but I don't want there to be stripes. 
I want it to just be a seamless transition. So as I transition different values in the sky, you'll notice that I continue to overlap the portions that I, I previously painted. And this just gives some beautiful layering. Now I'm darkening the top of the sky towards the heavens even a little bit more and this is a similar value it's slightly darker but it's a little more muted it has a little bit more gray in the blue and it just settles down that really vibrant blue just a little bit and gives it some nuance and some interest the layering that you can achieve with soft pastel is one of the best and most exciting things about it you can see these just different luminous layers of pigment and especially when you use a light touch all of those layers show through and it just sparkles and creates this really interesting piece and interesting colors as i'm moving down into the sky towards the horizon i'm going to start to warm up the blue so just as the value will get lighter as you move to the horizon the color temperature will also get warmer as we get to the land and this is a bit of a warmer blue this is a great american pastel called beacon blue which is really beautiful and i'm going over the blue that i already placed with a feather light touch i i said i was going to keep saying it but it really is so important in pastel in general but i find really in sky and cloud scenes when we're relying on the layering to get that beautiful luminosity lightly blending with the pastel into the other portions of the sky and then I sort of made this really odd straight line there on the right side of the cloud so I'm going back in with the peachy color and just adding a little bit more wispiness to the edges that's something to keep in mind too where the sky meets the cloud sometimes we do want a nice hard edge there but we don't want every edge to be a hard edge we want there to be a wispiness and a vaporous transition from sky to cloud coming back in with that gray color adding more of that vapor and the wispiness softening it a bit with my finger toning down the texture this is really something you can play around with all day i find i i have to stop myself sometimes because with the cloud it's it's just easy to get lost in adding adding those layers and tweaking the shape, tweaking the shadows. Now back to the shadow color. This is part of the push and pull of, of pastel where you add something that maybe you went a little too far, then you go back with the shadow, add more shadow in. It's all a back and forth and very intuitive. And that might be another thing that I love about painting the clouds. It's, it's intuitive. It's more based on the feeling and the shape and the movement. And that's why I often I do look at reference photos for clouds because there's some beautiful compositions. But it's also fun sometimes just to, to paint a cloud from, from memory. And using this trick will help of the shadow color, mid color, and light color. Now I'm reinforcing that distant tree line with a purple. That is a Giro purple, and it, it's down to this 
tiny little sliver because I love that color. This is also a Giro, just a little bit more of a warmer purple to give some nuance to the distant tree line but also having since I have pink and I have blue adding purple is just a really nice way to give some color harmony to the piece as well as, as some interest there. Now for the foreground, I want to add a little bit of depth in there back with my original hard pastel color, the brown color, and this will just create a nice visual path that leads you through the ground and up into the sky, rubbing that in a bit. And now I'm using a golden Terry Ludwig pastel to lightly go over the, the pink underpainting. I'm going to speed up this portion of the, the foreground because today's video is really all about the sky and I decided to keep the foreground pretty simple. I'm just using these shades of yellow and gold. I'm lightening it up as you get more in the distant foreground. That's another way we can create depth. Values will get lighter as you go into the distance. So just going back and forth here with the golds, lightening it up to get into the background. I'm also using varying my strokes, using more horizontal strokes as I'm in the background and more vertical strokes as I'm closer to the viewer in the foreground. Tweaking some of the trees. And now I'm back to the sky. This is going to be my lightest sky value. It is a blue earth aqua color. It's a very soft pastel. And this is where I really start to carve into the trees, carve into the distant tree line, make sure that I, I like that shape, but I'm also lightly dragging that value up so that it merges beautifully with the other blues in the sky and doesn't just leave a, a stripe there. just carefully cutting into the tree line. I added um, a little bit of a, a, just a sky hole there into that main dark tree, just cutting in there. And this is a very, very light touch here as I'm dragging it up. This is part of the painting process where I really slow down to. Now I'm going back in with the beacon blue, the push and the pull again to merge those, those colors together so we don't have a, a visible stripe. Going to continue with, with that beacon blue up into the darker portions of the sky and also where it meets the cloud. I'm not afraid to have it dr drag a little bit past the cloud, even into the shadowed portions again, because having it feel wispy and a softer edge as opposed to a hard edge is, is really nice. There, I'm adding just a little bit more of a harder edge as I carve into the cloud. And there, I wanted a nice little hole in, in the cloud with a, a harder edge. I just, I thought that looked really nice. More wispiness. Adding some of the light gray just in some key areas to be some wispy clouds and then I'm softening the edge of the where the distant tree line meets the sky with that same cool gray that I used in the clouds. This brings some color harmony there and also just softens and, and blends that. 
Now this is where I'm going to start really adding the light to the clouds. This is the creamy yellow color. I believe it's a unison pastel. And since I made up this scene, I, I decided that the light is going to be coming from the left side. So it's the left side of the clouds that I, I will be lightening up with the yellow and then even, even lighter as I get into the Diane Townsend pastel and then eventually just a few pops of that pure white. adding that yellow into, into the shapes that I already created, but then also fixing some of the shapes and tweaking, dragging it out a little bit into the blue, softening those edges also helps, helps it not look like the cloud is just pasted onto the sky. It merges the sky with the cloud. Now this is the Diane Townsend pastel. You can really hear the, the pumice in this, which I, I love. So I'll be scratching on just an even lighter value to the left side of, of the clouds. And this is why it was so important to use that light touch because we have a good bit of layers built up here. One nice thing about the Diane Townsend pastel is because of the pumice, it does a good job of cutting through some layers. If you did get a little thick in your application, this is a great pastel for finishing layers for that reason. I want to be careful here that I don't cover the the beautiful light colors, the peach and the cool gray. I want to make sure that that is still showing through, but just adding a little bit more white and lightness. But it's all a, a balance. Softening with my finger not really blending, just almost touching the surface very, very lightly. You can see me almost waving my hand across the paper without making a mark. I'm thinking <laughs> I don't want to go overboard with the light. And now this is my brightest white. This is the lightest value, which is a pure white. And I'm being very careful to just add it to a few key spots on the left side here where I really want the light to hit. And then this is a little bit of a bonus. This isn't part of the 222 pastels I mentioned, but I wanted to bring a little bit of the purple from the distant tree line into that shadow color, just in that one area, just as a way to bring a little bit of color harmony and also blend in that shadow to sky just a little bit. softening and moving some dust away and now we'll finish up the land with an even lighter pop of yellow at the very distant it's just amazing how a few of those marks will really create that feeling of depth we want to create paintings that feel like you can jump right in and that really really does it just a few little pops of the light in the foreground as well to draw the eye in. And now I'm coming in with my lightest yellow and this is the yellow, the creamy yellow that's in the clouds. And I'm just very carefully adding a few little, I like to call these sparkles at the end, just, just at that very distant point. Draws the eye 
And then just for fun, I really, really loved that hot pink underpainting. And so I thought I would add a few marks of that pink in the distance there. It's Obviously, maybe not something in nature to have hot pink like that, but it was just a really cool detail, I thought, to give the eye something really interesting and fun to look at. And then for finishing mark, just a few little grasses, some fun little bits, uh, some surprises that I like to add in, in the paintings to finish. Now this is a satisfying part when you tape the paper this way, taking the tape off and you just see that, that nice clean edge, which is always such a fun part to see. It also makes it easier to handle the pastel because you have that border. And then I just like to tap it a little bit to get rid of any excess dust. tap and we're gonna call this piece finished here's a nice close-up I tried to leave a lot of that underpainting showing especially in the ground so that you could see that pink you see some pink sparkling through in the sky but also that nuance that play of the warm with the cool and again, that is just a nice approach when it comes to painting white clouds to think warm and cool in those three-step values, the shadow color, the middle color, and then the light color. I hope that was helpful. I would love to see the clouds that you paint and create. You can tag me on Instagram at Valerie McKeon. If you enjoyed this video, I would also love it if you would subscribe and give me a thumbs up and I will see you in the next video.